Connected World Technology Report. Among the most interesting findings, two out of three workers around the world believe they don't need to be in the office anymore to be productive. Wouldn't that be nice? Let's head back out to our editor at large, Corey Johnson, for more. Corey? All right, this is really cool. This, these guys did a study of college students and recently employed people, uh, young people. The idea is to let us see what the next generation of workers are going to be like and how security needs to change within companies to address that. So I sat down with Cisco Vice President Tom Gillis to discuss the report. I talked to him about one of the findings that 40% of college students say the Internet is more important to them than dating, going out with friends, or listening to music. So I went to college, and I didn't think uh, that would have been the case. But lo and behold, yes, you know, the Internet is how these kids, you know, the next generation, that's how you communicate. And so if you take away the ability to communicate, you know, you can see how it would be ranked that high. 64% of these college students think that the Internet is more important to them than the access to a car. Yeah, amazing. Dad, can I borrow the keys to the car has turned into Dad, can I please access the Internet? Well, what does it tell us, though, about how they use the Internet? There's a, there's a much bigger story here. I think the sound bites are funny and interesting and, and entertaining, but, but the point is, the way that we do computing, the way we use technology to interact is fundamentally changing than it did in what we call the PC era. Here's an example. Four percent of college students say the newspaper is their most important tool for gathering information. Yeah, it's also useful for starting fires, right? So, so, so you know, clearly the ability to access information online is just much more efficient, much more immediate, much more personal. Um, for these kids, and therefore, it's the primary way of doing it. And it seems that the underlying theme with this whole study is that our future workforce treats technology very differently, and that the work they're going to do and the way they do that work is going to have to change to uh, accommodate this. Correct. And, and, you know, it's certainly not limited to just the new kids. Like, you know, I think I just came from the uh, Giga Mobilize conference, and we're looking at the uh, adoption of these technologies in the enterprise, and it's sweeping through the enterprise as well. I mean, I, I can see you've got an iPad yourself, right? So, so, so many of us have adopted these consumer technologies and are realizing, hey, these help me get my job done more efficiently, and that is a big, big deal. And we see companies uh, uh, like Salesforce with their Chatter program or Jabber, a, a corporate um, uh, uh, instant messaging-like or Twitter-like um, services. If you think about, in today's economy, you know, what is the, the sort of fundamental engine that fuels value for a company? It's the exchange of information. Yes, that eventually turns into building a product, but it's about people communicating, sharing ideas, and, and you know, sort of developing information more efficiently. And these tools are enabling, you know, what I call frictionless access to information, right? We're taking the barriers down for how you can access information, process information, and share information. And that changes work. It changes, fundamentally changes work. Work used to be a place that you would come to. Now it's something you do. Right? And you just, it wasn't all that long ago. I mean, I think both you and I were around when work was a building that you would come into and you sat, you know, the building had walls and you sat in an office that had walls or a cube with walls and it sat with a computer that was on the desk, was plugged by a wire into a port in the wall and there was firewalls. You know, there's all these walls that clearly delineated boundaries to define what is work, right? Those walls are coming down. And that's a very, very powerful dynamic. But also in this study, you know, you're suggesting that young people, whether it's young employees or college students, use the Internet in certain ways. We don't have to benefit. Here's an example. In your study, you say 19% say they were interrupted six or more times during an hour of trying to do homework. This is the dark side of this kind of frictionless uh, access to information is that there's tons of information out there. And so we've got to be intelligent about how we use it and how we, uh, how we allow it to, to impact our thinking processes. I, think I got, was telling you, I've got teenage kids, and my kids, when I watch them do their homework, they're constantly getting peppered with these little text messages and little video things, some sense of a picture, constant stream of interruptions. Uh, and so you need to be able to have the discipline to manage that and have some actual focused, you know, quiet thinking. But the point is the technology is there that we need to communicate, want to communicate, we can do it in ways we never could before. The notion of privacy, the notion of the role of Facebook and Twitter, yeah. um, two numbers, 32%, only 32% of these young employees think they should keep their personal life private. Uh, corollary, 68% follow the Twitter account of a coworker yeah. or a boss. This is a communication mechanism. And as I said, communication matters between you and I and we're friends, but it matters between co-workers and colleagues and bosses and managers and everything else. And so it's just inevitable that these communication tools are going to spill into the corporate realm. And one of the things that our customers are really struggling with, how do I draw that line? 
How do I let people have right. their Facebook and their Twitter and their you know, private online shopping accounts on the same device that I've got sensitive corporate information that has very clear guidelines around how you secure it and maintain it? Does it make the corporation more productive to have those things or less productive? Different companies have a different point of view on this. Some companies resist and they say, ooh, Facebook, that's evil, let's block it. Really? Like, is, seriously, is that a good productive thing? You know, like, given that, you're, that uh, there's a generation that rely on Facebook to communicate and say, hey, honey, I'm going to be working late. I'm going to come home you know, late. You're going to block that communication. That has a very negative impact on your employee productivity and also their morale. So most of the companies that we talk to are looking for more intelligent controls that can allow them to draw that line between business and personal. Let people use Facebook to do it in a responsible fashion. Uh, and this is very much our focus of development. All right, well, uh, it's an interesting study because it really does point a picture of what the workforce is going to look like going forward. Emily? Certainly, times are a change. And thanks, Corey. TechCrunch founder Michael Arrington created a storm of.